Well, a year back, we successfully added the WLED project into HomeKit. The only problem was that it took too many components to assemble the project. A year later, it's now ridiculously easy to assemble and set up the WLED project into Apple HomeKit. Well, hello and welcome to my channel, which is all about building an affordable DIY smart home that supports Apple HomeKit all by using HomeBridge. And I've done tons of tutorial videos that you can literally use right now. So pretty please do take a look and don't feel shy to like, share and subscribe to always follow along. Now, with Halloween and Christmas around the corner, I thought to myself, what better way of updating the WLED video that I had done a year back and show you all how easy it is to set it up with no flashing of firmware or any additional wiring. Plus, you can use this same setup for your DIY Ambilight project. Now, I just love hitting two birds with one stone. Well, if you didn't know, the WLED project itself has many features. Modern UI with color effect and segment controls, over 100 special effects, iOS and Android apps to control the LED strips. Now, those are just some of them. The detailed feature list is right here and I have left a link in the description as well. Now, I did find this product from AliExpress from a company called Atom. Now, don't worry, there's no sponsorship here. It does come in a simple packaging, good build quality, connectors at both ends to connect to a power supply as well as the LED strip, and is already pre-flashed with the WLED software. Basically, it's ridiculously easy to set up for your smart home. Now, for all of this to work with Apple HomeKit, I will be using obviously this WLED controller from this company called Atom. I'll be also using a five meter 60 LED strip, which is WS218B black PCB. I'll be also using a five watt 10 amp, a compact 50 watt power supply brick. And to enable that cross-platform integration, we will be using HomeBridge. Plus I also have videos on how to install it and I've left links in the description. Now, by the end of this tutorial, you will be able to install and control your WLED project using Apple HomeKit, plus gives you that wow effect for Halloween and Christmas. It basically gives you that gentle nudge. As always, I have broken down the video into chapters with the timestamps in the description feel free to jump to any one of them. So let's not waste any more time, like I always say, and let's jump into this tutorial. All right, let's talk about LEDs. The favorite website I go to pick up my LEDs is from this website uh, with, that's within AliExpress called BTF Lighting. They have a lot of products that you can go and purchase. But the one that we are really interested in that works with this controller is the one called WS2812. So typically when you go in for LED strips, you want to go for a 30 LED or a 60 LED and can be addressable. So that's what you would need for a WLED project. So in this case, you have different types, IP67, IP65. The one that I'll be using is IP67 over here. They're a little bit on the expensive end, but you can also use them outside. So this is where you would go and look for LED WLED strips. They're also available on your common online marketplaces. And also at the same time, within this side, you can also pick up your compact power brick that uh, keeps all those uh, wiring neat and tidy with your setup. So you could go for the 5 volt or the 12 volt. In my case, I am going for the 5 volt that I have with me right here that we'll be using for the build. And you would go for any of this current wire. Now, don't worry to know what power supply you will need. I will show it to you in the uh, WLED configuration. This will allow you to go and pick up the right one. In my case, I'm using the 5 volt 10 ampere because of the number of LEDs that I have. And I'll show you how to calculate in the WLED section configuration. But this is the website that you can go and pick up your uh, WLEDs. Again, you can check Amazon or your uh, online marketplace. If not, I've left links to the description of what I'm using and you can go and purchase and um, have your setup done. Now, the next step after this is the WLED project. There is a very simple documentation a website that you can use. However, if you're using this controller, you're basically skipping all of this because it comes pre-flashed. Now, just in case you want to build your own, you can go through the documentation, tons of information, 
And you can also go to the basics. They also have a complete section on tutorial. So you can even refer over here. Lots of good videos, lots of information. And I've also left a link in the description. But in this video, you eliminate all of that and you go straight into a plug and play solution. Now from here, I want to go into talking about the product. So this is an open source uh, company from China and they flash devices. So they also take away the pain of doing that. And they also sell in uh, all in one home bridge unit. I haven't tested that yet, but if you were to go to products and if you were to go to WLED, you have the, the controller right here. And I'm not sure you can purchase it and what is the shipping time. So this is something you need to test. I got mine from AliExpress. I've also left a link to the product in the description, which you can use as well. What we're going to do is we're going to go and configure the controller and add it onto your network. To add this controller, what we need to do is first, let's go and see how we have to connect it. It's very simple connection basically. All you have to do first, before putting the power supply first, is to go ahead and connect the LED strip. My God, I feel like a Christmas tree over here. Um, so you go ahead, connect it right here and you want to make sure you want to keep these cables aside otherwise they are, once you power it up it just creates a short circuit and it's not going to blow anything but you just want to keep it separate and then from here the next thing what you want to do is just connect the power supply okay now once you power up you'll only see one led working we'll go and configure and you'll see me light up as a christmas tree very soon once this is done what you have to do go to your wi-fi settings and you will see that it creates a network called WLED AP. Now, one of the things you want to pay attention, if you see this lock sign, it means it's in access point mode. And in some cases you would not have it. So it will be an open Wi-Fi network. Either ways, click on it and it will give you a prompt to add in the password. So in this case, the password is WLED1234. In some cases, it's not an access point mode. Don't worry, but if you have it as locked, you can use this password as WLED1234. And all you have to do is click on join. Once it's joined, you will see this welcome window. What we're gonna do is go ahead and add in our Wi-Fi settings. Go to Wi-Fi and I'll go ahead and add in my network information. Now from here, I'm just going to give it a name. Let's call it WLED.local, which we can use it in our browser. And then I'm just gonna click on save and connect. Click on send. It will automatically close and connect to your home network. Now once you're on your home network, let's go ahead and click on the plus sign and type in WLED.local. And there it is. You have it already included onto your network. That's how simple it was. Plug and play. Now from here, what you want to do is you want to go and light up all the LEDs. So we're going to go first to config and you're going to go to LED preferences. Then what we're going to do is go ahead and disable the limiter. Now, once you go over here, we're just going to scroll down and put in the number of LEDs. So you want to calculate the length, total length, which is in meters. And then you want to count the number of LEDs. So typically, if you get a 60 LED per meter, into five is 300 LEDs that I have over here. It's 300. So I will just update the value over here. 300. Now, once I do that over here, it will automatically tell you what is the power supply you need. So you can always go ahead and purchase this first, put in the value of LEDs you're intending to buy and you will know your power supply. Now from there, what I'm going to do is you want to change the GPIO to one. Okay. With that being said, you want to go ahead and click on save. Now you see me all lit up. It's that simple. Now, before we go back into the preferences, what we want to do is you want to go to security and updates. Now, when you get this device, you will need to check the version. In my case, when I received my version, I found out that it was in beta version. So it was at B7 or you may get a B6. Now, when you see this version, what you need to do is go ahead and download the ESP 02.bin to update the file. Now by mistake, if you use another file, you can pry open the backside of this and then flash it using an FTDI. I learned it the hard way and that's what I had to do. But in this case, you don't need to do that. Go ahead and download the ESP 02.bin and then you want to go to manual OTA update and then you want to, you can go ahead and click on it. It will tell you. So if you click on it, it will take you to the source and you can download this file and then choose file and then you can upload it. It's that simple. So once it's done, it takes a few seconds, you'll get a succeed message and it's done. Now from here, 
You also want to go and see some of the effects that you get within the WLED. So lots of effects that you can go and test, which we will check right now. And then once this is the only configuration you need to do, just add in the number of LEDs and you're good to go. Now from here, let's go back. So you want to see if the intensity is working. So if I lower the intensity, it goes down, it goes up. And also, and what I'm going to do is you can also go to effects and you can even change it. So you can see it. Aurora, blend, and you can also increase the speed. And you can also go towards Halloween. Oh, it will look so nice. And then you can also go, so you can select as much as I I don't want to play too much else. this video would go on and on. Now, once this is done, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add it to Homebridge. Now to do that, I'm going to go and access my Homebridge instance and I'm going to log in. You want to go to plugins and you want to look for WLED. Now you want to go ahead and download the Homebridge simple WLED. This is because it's the most recent and updated. So let's go ahead and install. Now for the configuration, very simple. I've left a link in the description. I've left a default one. There are almost 60 effects that you can use. And if you want, you can go and add in. So what we're gonna do is gonna click on raw, command A or control C on PC, go to home bridge. And what we're gonna do is just select all this text and paste. Now, first things first, you wanna go and add in the IP address. So I'm gonna go ahead and access my router. Go to go to devices. And I still have the WLED project right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give it a reserved IP or 34. So anytime your network restarts or your home bridge instance starts or the device restarts, it has always the same reserved IP address. So it's very important for the configuration. Apply changes. So it ends at 86.34. I'm going to go to home bridge and I'm just going to update that information here. These are all of the effects that I've placed and we will check them. And then I left the show effect control through, turn off WD effect false meaning when you turn it on, you can always revert back to the original color and the default speed. That's about it. Go save and let's go ahead and restart the Homebridge service. Now with the Homebridge service restarted, all we have to do now is go into Apple Home Kit and add it. So let's open up the Apple Home app, tap on the plus sign, add accessory, and we're gonna tap on more options. You will see that it's right at WLED. So we're gonna tap on it, add anyway. We're gonna copy that code that's on the screen. Continue, continue. So I have the light right here. So if I tap on it, I can change color. I can turn on the effect button and I can select which one I need. So I can go through all of the effects. I can change the speed and let me go to Halloween. So it's changing all one by one and that's Halloween. I can even reduce the intensity and that's how it's working. Very simple. And just like that, we added the WLED project into Apple HomeKit, a simple plug and play solution, ridiculously easy. And it also gives it a gentle nudge to add in this project into your smart home. If you want any more HomeBridge plugin tutorial videos, you can check them out over here. Or if you want to go and set up your ultimate smart home bridge, you can check that out over here. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers and have a nice day.